I know, I know, angry man yelling at the clouds, bitching about how good it used to be back in the olden days. He's got more days behind him than he has ahead of him, so he's going to try and desperately latch out to the past. I know, I know. But I mean, come on. WrestleMania used to be one of those things that even if you weren't really a WWE fan, you would get hyped up about. You would get excited about. It would move you emotionally to some degree, some type of way. Because you knew this was a big deal. You knew this was the biggest show of the year. You know this was a special night in wrestling or sports entertainment or whatever the hell you want to call it. And as a result, you would, you know, be anxious and be pumped up. And you think about WrestleMania is one of those types of shows that even the most casual, casual of viewers that hardly ever watch a show or used to watch it every day religiously 10, 15 years ago but don't anymore... That would be the pay-per-view that they would still buy. And if there was a second one, it would probably be the Royal Rumble. So yeah, WrestleMania is the big shebang bang It's the biggest shebang bang in wrestling. Do not get it twisted. There is nothing, and I mean nothing, that compares to this. It is the Super Bowl of sports entertainment. You know, Vince's dumb fucking ass sits there and says, I don't want to have the number associated with WrestleMania anymore because it makes the show seem old. You fucking dumbass. That adds prestige to the event. When people hear something like Super Bowl 56, they say, oh, they don't say, oh my God, this is an old event. They say, yeah, this event's been around that long because it's that fucking important. Anyways. Like, I realize I've been pretty disconnected from wrestling, sports over the past few months, haven't been watching as much, haven't been engaged as much on social media, what have you. But even then, I should be able to look at the WrestleMania card this year and say, man, that's something. That's something that has my interest. That's something I want to see. That's something I can't wait to find out what they do. And I ain't gotten any of that this year. There's none of that. There's none of that. Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we could get delusional about history of WrestleMania and think that every show back in the day had a bunch of WrestleMania-worthy matches. That's absolutely not true. You've had plenty of matches at WrestleMania over the years that didn't have a place on that show, didn't freaking belong, but that's what you did. Now, some of that was different time, different place, but in this modern time, now you're going to charge the ticket prices, you're going to charge, and you're going to put on a two-night event then you better make that two-night event damn worth it. And when you really honestly look at this card on both nights, how many of these matches truly feel WrestleMania-worthy? How many of them? How many of these matches do you look at and say, man, I need that. Inject that into my veins. I've got to have this. Like they're even overdoing the whole celebrity shit. Logan Paul, Johnny Knoxville, Pat McAfee. And I know you're going to say, well, Pat McAfee, you know, that's a commentator. Yeah, but he's a former NFL player and he's as known probably for the podcast outside of wrestling as he is for being a commentator on SmackDown. Like, the point remains is that three of the 14 matches between the two-night show, the two-night event, feature an internet guy, the dude from Jackass, a show, by the way, that's about 15 years past its damn relevancy, fitting for WWE. And then the damn commentator from SmackDown. That's over fucking 20% of your damn show. Do any of those matches absolutely have to be on WrestleMania? Probably not. I like, it sucks. If we were going to have a celebrity have to have a match this year, why couldn't it have been Bad Bunny again? Fuck his schedule. Cancel that tour. I don't give a shit what you do. But I mean, seriously. You got two nights that I'm staring down the barrel of and saying, I wonder how I'm going to stay awake. I wonder what's actually going to grab my attention. I wonder what's actually going to get me interested. Logan Paul match isn't going to do that. 
Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin sure as fuck isn't going to do that because all I'm going to spend the whole match thinking about is how this could have been an event in part that was built around bum-ass broke Baron Corbin and his redemption angle, his redemption arc paying off in a big way here at WrestleMania. And they screwed it up because they're idiots. Like your SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. It's appropriate that it's called the SmackDown Tag Titles because this match certainly belongs a fucking SmackDown. The Usos versus Shinsuke and Rick Boogs! There's a fuck. The New Day taking on Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Again! Does that match need to be on the WrestleMania card? Probably not. Like, you've got matches that don't feel like in any way, shape, or form they call for being on your biggest show of the year. And it's like, just because you can do two nights doesn't mean you should. Just because you can put on 14 matches in no way, shape, or form means you need to or should. Like, I look at the two women's championship matches. They're both on night one. Get them a fuck out of the way. Like, the story should have been Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. But, of course, it's not. And instead, you have to wait this whole time for Bianca to get this payoff against Becky Lynch. And at this point in time, going all the way back to SummerSlam, doesn't even matter anymore. Does it? Does it really? And Ronda Rousey taking on Charles Flair? You heard me right, Charles Flair. Who the fuck would be interested in that? Why the hell would you want to see that match? Why in any way, shape, or form would you trust a Charles Flair in this type of big profile spot? That botchy bitch will fuck up again? Certainly. Then you got Seth freaking Rollins versus his mystery opponent. Ooh, is it going to be Cody Rhodes? Ooh, is it going to be Shane McMahon? Ooh, who gives a shit? It'd be better at this point if it was a Cena or a goddamn Stone Cold that came out and squashed his ass. Give us a relief of something. Give us something you can actually remember. But oh, of course, on night one, the big deal with Stone Cold Steve Austin as he's going to be at WrestleMania after 19 years. And he's got to get in the, the in-ring action, except he's totally not, and he's going to be on the KO show, which is not a goddamn match. You've been here before you've done that. And even the whole thing about, is Austin going to get physical? Is Austin going to wrestle? That time has passed, really. Who cares? I know what you're going to say. It's one of the biggest stars in the history of the business. Of course you're going to care. Eh... The time for this was probably eight to ten damn years ago. Now? No. Like, that's your night one. I could argue, as I look at this card, not a single one of those matches on Saturday night feels like, to me, it belongs on WrestleMania. Just because the Bianca and Becky Lynch storyline has went on since SummerSlam, that doesn't make it a good one. Just because you have Ronda Rousey and the most overrated, overpushed, overforced fucking talent on your roster in Charles Flair in your other women's championship match, that doesn't mean that it needs to be featured at WrestleMania either. Because who gives a shit about that storyline? Oh, but the in-ring action will be good. Oh, who gives a fuck? Ah, these match and move Meltzer magoos that fucking took over. The wrestling fandom. It's annoying because it's supposed to be about more than that. It's supposed to be the stuff that creates memories and creates moments. And matches don't do that. Moments do. Sometimes you get moments out of matches, yes. But it's not about all the damn flips and kicks. So I look at this Saturday night and I'm like, I'll watch but I won't care. And then when it gets to Sunday, like you got a fatal four-way tag team women's tag title match. Because that's what this company needs is more goddamn belts. And Sasha Banks and Naomi get kind of shoehorned fucking in here. What a disgrace. 
Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn. At least I'll say this. Sami Zayn I respect now. I'm glad he's getting a, a one-on-one -on -one featured match at WrestleMania. He works hard. He's earned that spot. He's deserved it, in my opinion. So I do care about that. I don't care much for Austin Theory, but I know Pat McAfee is really good. So I will actually kind of give a shit about that match, but only but so much. The Raw Tag Team Championship match. Okay. Okay, bro. 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 Alpha Academy. Street Profits. Whatever. Bobby Lashley versus Amos. Could be interesting. Feels like a big step down for Bobby Lashley if I'm being transparent here. You probably have two matches that really move the needle for me in any way on this entire card. And that's probably Sunday night. And that's Edge versus AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns in the title versus title winner take all unification match. And even then, I'm probably much more intrigued about what Edge and AJ Styles can do than Roman Reigns, our tribal chief, and Brock Lesnar can do. And I realize the whole dynamics of the Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns story are different than they've been in the past. That's absolutely true. But it's like you threw so much behind this. This is the only thing that you really honestly, truly, truly care about as a company. And what's going to result out of this and where do you go from here? Like, yeah, some of the stuff they've done has been very good. But at some point in time, it loses its luster. Like these guys wrestled a lot in recent years. And now you're coming back to these two guys' main event in a WrestleMania again. Maybe it's just because I'm old and I'm getting impatient. That's probably what it is, yes. But damn. Like, why can't we have something different? I'm sure Lesnar and Reigns will be fantastic. I'm sure Edge and AJ Styles will be fantastic. I'm sure there will be a couple of other matches on this card that will be very good. But again, I look at this card this year and I am absolutely fucking underwhelmed. Like, this is supposed to be WrestleMania! This is supposed to be the biggest show of the year. And this is like some weird collection and assortment of random TV and secondary pay-per-view matches, the likes of which I don't know that I've ever seen from this company. I'll watch both nights. I'll review both nights. But I'm just so damn apathetic about it. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing a bunch of ranting and raving. And if you think this has been ranting and raving, no... This is more of the reflections of a disenfranchised, apathetic wrestling fan. Like those of you that have watched me over the years, you know when I'm ranting and raving. This ain't it. A little bit of whiny bitchy here, sure, but yeah, all of you do it too, so what's the fuck is the difference? But yeah, this is... Pfft. Like it doesn't even move me enough. Like it doesn't even suck so hard that it moves me enough to get like all oh, outrageous and you know over the top it just looks fucking lame to me